we are live streaming on YouTube uh, by the way and so if you come to this video and there's only zero views after Google re-renders you might see a thousand comments which is common and you'll see ratings but you won't see any views because Google doesn't carry over the views from the live stream to when they repost the video and you watch it later and so the live stream also gets chopped up I, I know I'm sure a lot of people have noticed that that you're better off catching the live stream if it's possible but I know it's not for most people because of different parts of the world blah 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 time constraint and whatever right got a got a life or something like that maybe but if you were actually trying to get everything and that's important because it seems like the really important stuff gets chopped out of the live streams when they re-render back up on Google and so that could be confusing hi friends uh, ba -ba -ba, friends glass war prophet cats alive losing is over and I'll just I usually like to say hi to a few people if I think about it I usually do some nights I come out and I just go whack job Adam hi Kate and once again, let me remind everybody, Kate got the Fukushima Hounds chat room down below. You can get t-shirts there. You can go over and create a board, have a debate. There are sections there that are really, you know, these are um, the people that are seem to be populating it all seem to have the best intentions at heart. And that's an unusual thing because the Internet brings a lot of trolls, but we don't really see them over there. We see Jay Cullen, but we sorted him out a little while ago. <laughs> and a few more of the bootlickers. But, I mean, that comes with the territory. You'll find links below to that. Yeah, tomorrow, Original Punisher is going to do a, um, a walkabout with radiation with one of his friends. And so he's posting videos, and that's really cool to see. Kathy, Starlight, and Starlight, I sent an email to whoever it is pretending it's you on my email. And I wasn't mean, but I, I was very firm, because they shouldn't be doing that, right? Roosevelt, Kevin O'Kane, and Unit 4 had issues, folks, the last few days. Kevin Blanche, you'll find links below, has covered it. I got the video and I just never got to it today and that's stupid. I should have been at that and I just remembered at that time. Checks and balances. You sit. Ronald, we'll get started in a second. And um, I didn't check to see if the video was streaming. What the hell? Okay, it all looks like you're streaming. Okay. Let's get out and kick some nuclear butt. Three minutes in, we're still doing good. Let me see how a couple more people. Yours takes five minutes. Body less. Oh, I left that running. Blah, blah, blah. So after the stream last night, my router went down. That's two routers and eight computers in yeah, almost eight months. MSVS, Don. Okay, I'm pretty well got everybody covered. Let's jump into the fray, shall we? There's a new model, and there's a link below to that model. And it shows the West Coast covered in Fukushima fallout a week after 311. Now, you know, at 100 miles an hour in the jet streams, that's 2,400 miles in 24 hours. So I'll let you do the math on that. The ocean really truly isn't infinite. It's 5,500 miles. And the jet stream doesn't respect your borders. The public is anything but safe outside of the evacuation zones during a Fukushima class disaster. Well, if Pickering, Ontario, any of those 25 reactors go down, the lake is done. The St. Lawrence is done. Quebec, Montreal, they're done. The Americans across and Lake Superior, they're done. Everybody in a radioactive fallout zone of several hundred miles that's contaminated till the end of time if they have an accident. And they're releasing it from their spent fuel pools all the time in Canada. All over Ontario and all over Quebec, the radioactive fallout is at least covered, has covered all of that over the last several decades, many times over. Each nuclear reactor has fallout in your community from 120 liters in the spent fuel pools. The spent fuel pools are full of radioactive chain reaction rods went through their ionized and radiated 
And these are why we keep them. We we're, were told they were kept in a sarcophagus, but there's no such thing. You have to vent it, or the noble gases from these vicious, demented concoctions will blow that up and you'll lose the site, then you'll lose that part of the country. Like the Chechia River, where they lost 7,500 communities and 9,000 square miles, and a decade later lost another 1,000 square miles because of a detonation of one of their tanks, their storage tanks. All the heavy particulates got into the bottom, released the noble gases, started a chain reaction, released these noble gases, and blew up the tank, and they lost a 1,000 square kilometers. A decade later, they came up with this great idea. In the meantime, what to do with all their stuff was to put it in a pond that was isolated on a hill. And so the pond had a drought in that area. The pond dried up, and they lost another 1,000 square kilometers. Because the fallout, they always say cesium, just like this model that we're talking about tonight is cesium-137, which is fine. I'm not saying that. It's a new model. It's awesome. Don't get me wrong. But, Zoe got the door, won't let me close the door again. She'll stretch out in the doorway just, so you have to put up with the noise sometimes. And there's a hundred times more strontium. There's more than that. There's all the, the cesium's other daughters, 134 to 135 from the chain reaction. And no atom is so small, it will not give you a cancer and an autoimmune reflex where your white blood cells will flood your body till you get it out of your body. And guess what? This stuff sequesters in your organs. It sequesters into your bone marrow. It creates havoc immediately until the end of time. It just keeps pulsing the gammas and the betas. And so your body will try to lock that down. And it tries to build a sarcophagus. We call it a tumor. But it's the same thing. That's why a tumor exists. is because your body is attacking it constantly. Now, let me cover some of this. Must be the fury traffic coming by. I'll quiet down in another few minutes. My mistake, my bad. There's a link below to the model. And they wrote some stuff under the model. I'm going to cover that. I had to switch computers at the last second. Global disposition of 137 radionuclides from Fukushima nuclear power plant accident. The Fukushima accident fallout. Well, it's not just a plume that came out of there. Okay, all right. It's not just a, like a, you know, I wish it was. I really do. That's why I'm here tonight, because that's not what happened. It wasn't just a plume. There's three melter reactors at Fukushima. And all three of them are hemorrhaging into your environment relentlessly. From the melted reactors, the coriums, the fissionable products, the detonations of these reactors, scattered nuclear fuel all over the site. The fuels are in... Uh, pellets. And I forgot to warm up my calculator. Better open it up before I forget. Ooh. And so there's 3,450 assemblies and in each reactor. And each assembly has around 80 rods. And each rod is around 12 feet long. And just hang on, I'll do the math. So there's 80 rods. Duh. And I'll do that again. 80. Mm, Got to do that again. <laughs> so the bundles, there's 3,450 bundles in each reactor. And you're going to divide each bundle, because they're 1,500 pounds or so, by 80 rods. This is important. 18, 18 pounds a rod. So 18.75 pounds a rod times... Uh, 20, uh, 16 ounces, how's this again? Let me get rid of that. I'm I messed up the last time, by the way. So you got um, 18 pounds, a pounds, uh, 16 ounces times uh, 28 grams, if I remember correctly, 448 
I screwed up. Somebody will correct me, I'm sure. <laughs> Somebody will be like, you forgot the 2.7. You forgot it. You got to do it over. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to read. You can't trick me. So times. Uh -huh. So per pound. So what's the math here? So that's uh, for, uh, so a single gram is a million watts. And it doesn't lose its energy just because you atomized it and aerosol it. But a gram is a million watts of uranium-238, which is in the reactors. Most of it was uh, uranium-238. And so I want you to think about this, for because this is really important. So 448 grams times all, more than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. 448 times per pound. And so you got to times that 18 for each rod, and that's 8,064 more radioactive atoms followed than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. If just a single rod, just a rod, but let's go by the bundle. So we're getting summer times, and we'll say 80 uh, rods in a bundle. So that's 645,000 times. In just a single one, there was 3,415 of these bundles. But 6, 645,000 times, uh, 645,000 radio, more radioactive particles than all the grains of sands on the beaches of the planet. So just to make it simple, we'll say, um, we'll, we'll multiply that just by one reactor. Times 3,450. Oh, it is going to be big. I'm going to, I'm going to stutter. So that'd be the millions. 2.2 .2 billion times more radioactive atoms. Not counting the particles, we'll get into that later. But radioactive atoms from the cannibalizing, the melting, the explosion, the aerosol, the evaporation of just one reactor's and we're not going to talk about, hang on a second, because we're not going to talk about <coughs> Unit 3. We're only talking about the other reactors. Unit 3 is 2 million times worse than all the other reactors on the planet. So you've got to multiply that by 2 million times. And Unit 3 is missing. So, that's a big number. You've got to add another 2 million in front of that 2.2 .2 billion, whatever that is. But you're not counting the fuel pools. You're not counting the buildings getting cannibalized and they're all atoms. And so when you aerosol that, right, and release that, that those particles are so tiny, they're smaller than the forest fires, they're smaller than the car pollution, but they travel right across the Trans-Pacific corridors into other countries, right? We see in peer review studies on that, I covered that. So now we're talking just, like, forget about everything, but just go to one reactor and what was in the core in unit, and and that that is 2.2 .2 billion times, not counting reactor three. Now Chernobyl was one-third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima, and Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown that we know about compared to it. And 25 years later, they still haven't found the corium. 25, that part of the corium, 25 years later, they still will never contain that building. You can never get in there in anybody's lifetime on this planet at this moment. We'll never live long enough to see somebody go in there. They won't try. They built a containment unit on it. They, they sacrificed a million people. They, and this was only a 30% of any of the reactors at Fukushima. This was only one-third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima. This was graphite. This was nothing compared to what was at Fukushima, which was missiles from nuclear silos and but just a single rod just a single rod is a, is an amazing snowstorm of radioactive material that would cause massive problems on this planet and these cancers take 5 10 15 20 years to manifest and and to cause you to liquidate your assets and go down the scariest road imaginable. Cancer, ionized radioactive particles, these particles do not are not created on the sun. They are not made by the sun, rather. 
You won't find them on the moon. You're not going to find them in Pluto or any of its moons. You're not going to find it in the periodic tables. We made them. They are the most insidious thing possible. They, they are not what they tell you. They are not like bananas. They are not like potato chips. Those, anybody who says that needs a shot in the side of the head. These are outrageous lawyers. These are outrageous fabricators. These are, you know, we should legalize burning scientists at the stake again because nuclear scientists deserve to be burned in your communities. Like Guy Fox Day, you know? They did which is just so that, because he was the guy trying to take down the British aristocracy. You know how the upper British Parliament is not elected, they're appointed. And they oversee the people you elect in Britain, for instance. Now, my, by the way, you know, Britain's got 8 million litres a day going into the ocean. By the way, you know, you put 45,000, 45 45-gallon 45 drums off the coastline of California, you're wondering why the sea, li sea lions are sick. Well, that's where you put them. They're all rusted out. Your radioactive yellow cake. You didn't put it in the ocean for something to do. You put it out there because it was insane. You didn't put it in the ocean because it was harmless. You put it out there because it was the most toxic thing on the planet and you had to get it somewhere. The cancer rates were rising wherever it was. It was a direct threat. And so last ditch effort, he ran out in the ocean, dumped it or scuttled the boat like Russia scuttled subs with reactors in them, with rods in the reactors. Stupid. Stupid people, stupid, stupid, idiotic, idiots. A politician is dirt. It's dirt. It's something. No, you know, well, dirt you can grow food, and a politician it should be locked up in a sarcophagus till the end of time. The people at the NRC in the Senate hearing recently about Fukushima, that is, these are the most evil people imaginable. The people who work for TEPCO are the most evilest people imaginable. The people in your university, if you got a nuclear department there, they're the most evilest people imaginable. The people who make and sell nuclear products are evil by the very definition. Anything that proliferates these toxic elements and help create them and, and, and create an industry for them are evil because they know better. They know what they're doing. You don't think for a second that a nuclear scientist doesn't know the difference between a banana and a nuclear fuel rod. Do you really think that? You can't tell the difference between a banana or a potato chip and a nuclear fuel rod. And you wonder why I might get upset, why I might get angry, why I might lash out, why I might just rage. When I see university professors getting up on CBC, and I've called them out on this channel, and say it's like a banana, say it's like a potato, say it's like walking in the sunshine, radioactive ionized elements from chain reactions. Show me that in the book. Show me that in the textbook. Show me that in the E equals MC square where it says chuck in a couple of bananas and some potato chips to make it just right. You got to crush them up with a special crusher first, Dana. We can't tell you because the terrorists will get it. You fired over 2 million Dirty bombs a month in Iraq for nine years. So shut your mouth. Shut your pie hole. You're evil. You can't get any more eviler than that. Media are saying, oh, Al Qaeda is going to come and get us with a dirty bomb if we don't grope your children at the airports. Five million orphans in, uh, in Afghanistan. What about them? They want to protect your kid. But what about the five million orphans they created? What about the 280,000 rapes in the military over the last decade? That's okay, Dana. We support our troops. What about the 22 veterans committing suicide every day? That's okay, Dana. We support the ones that are under killing and creating 5 million orphans and millions of refugees and millions missing and millions dead and a wasteland. You destroyed the countries with your depleted uranium and you wave your flag at your football game and your hockey games at your concert and claim your patriotic singing the Star Spangled Banner or Oh Canada, you're the stupidest thing imaginable. You are beyond stupid. There's nothing that could help you. You have a lobotomy from genetically modified foods and fluorine and the 65,000 chemicals the EPA grandfathered in in 1981. Which, by the way, that's why you're allowed to have 4,000 chemicals in a cigarette. 
That's why you're allowed to have 4,000 chemicals with no environmental human impact study. Because your government loves you and grandfathered them all in. Well, no. Most of these are carcinogenic. They're like, fuck it. We're going to let the population. Why would you put 4,000 chemicals? This hasn't got 4,000 chemicals in a cigarette. This doesn't have a filter to make the particles smaller to get through the liners of your lungs. Why don't you your universities ever do a study about the 4,000 chemicals? Why don't your university ever do a study about the filter? Why don't your universities always, why do they always do studies about nicotine giving you cancer when there's 4,000 chemicals in the cigarette? You don't suppose that 4,000 chemicals got anything to do with cancer? No, because they can get money on doing studies on nicotine. So they get nicotine without the 4,000 chemicals. It's not like they take a cigarette, extract the 4,000 chemicals, left over with the nicotine, and now they're going to do a study. No, they just get nicotine. See how that works? They don't take a cigarette and analyze a cigarette. So, well, there's 65 chemicals in the paper. There's horror in the filter. And there's 4,000 plus chemicals and radioactive material in the tobacco. And we don't know why. But it doesn't give you cancer. It's the nicotine. Give us another decade. Give me another couple of billion dollars at a whole bunch of institutions. And we could probably prove that the nicotine could have give somebody cancer. If we purify it and get it down to 100% pure nicotine and put it on a cut or something, we could probably give him cancer. Why was it necessary to do that? Put 4,000 chemicals in a cigarette. Why was it necessary to grandfather in the 65,000 chemicals with no environment? All this time later, still no environmental human impact studies. But if you're selling, your children are selling lemonade on the side of the road, and you got to give that little bastard a ticket. And you go down on the beach and you tip over a rock, they'll tase you and shoot you and drag you into court and, and bankrupt you. But logs were washing along that coastline from the logging industry that got loose and destroyed everything. Oh, that's okay. That's Mother Nature. No, it's not. Mother Nature doesn't have a chainsaw and a big corporation. Let me get back on track. 2.2 billion times more radioactive atoms released from Fukushima just from one reactor than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. 2.2 billion times more radioactive particles than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. If that was a snowstorm, just all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet, if that was a snowstorm, if that all rose up magically, all the grains of sands, the 26,000 islands in British Columbia would take you 71 years to visit one a day, and they're covered in beaches all over the world. If they all went up in the air and there was a snowstorm, magic, and they were floating around, what would it look like? Now multiply it by 2.2 billion with a B. William, we'll call him 2.2 Williams with a W. No, it doesn't work. Billion. 2.2 billion. Did you see uh, TSA groping? You remember that guy? A million. What was his name? And he had this little midget, a short person. And TSA had him up on a stool with their hands down the back of his pants. Disgusting. 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 And a groping 100... Hundreds of millions of children a year. Just remember, you know, five million orphans in Afghanistan. Not counting the widows, not counting the dead. Then Iraq's got a couple of million widows. Iraq's got around four million in refugee camps. Iraq's got a couple of million missing and a couple of million minimum dead. And then the entire country was sprayed with uranium. That's follow too. That's follow too because the bullets, when they're going through the air... They're, they're catching fire. They're pyroplastic, I think. is the name for it. They're going to turn at a high speed. They burn off. A gram of it produces more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sand. This is ionized. This is radiated. Like there's uranium-238 allegedly in the ocean, natural. But you can take a bat in the ocean, and I did for 14 years as a commercial diver. I didn't see fish swimming around with great big tumors from the natural uranium over millennium. Because it's insignificant. I spend six hours a day on the ocean floor. The elements that are in the ocean are natural to our entire solar system. The elements that we put in the ocean are not. And there's nothing can 
live in close proximity to that. The radioactive particles coming out of the ocean, just from Fukushima's three melter reactors hemorrhaging into the ocean all day, 1,440 minutes a day, 1,000 pounds a minute, think of it as St. Paddy's Day die, but think of the tens of thousands of miles, square miles, of rain picked up and brought in your community. That's radioactive fallout. Think about all these particles from millennia, uh, from decades of you know, atmospheric testing and open air testing. You take in Alaska where they detonated at the end of it, up before they put a band on it, that they, they were detonating around 100 bombs a year, say 50 to 100 nuclear explosions in Nevada and Alaska. That, that radioactive fallout from those bombs don't exist just for Russian bombs or whoever you want to demonize next. They exist for all nuclear weapons. They all have radioactive fallout. I know, I know, that kind of, that's rough on your brain to think that way. But your government, at the same time, was telling people duck and cover routines because the Russians are going to drop a bomb and then you would have radioactive fallout right across your country. But while they were making those videos, they were making a hundred, they were dropping a hundred bombs a year open air. Picked the wrong night to leave the door open, Zoe. What are you two, you little bastard? You're gone outdoors. I shouldn't call you that. Because you're a female, and so that means you're a little bitch. But you're Dana's little puppy, and Dana loves you. And I don't call you that name only live across the world. So people can yell at me, why did you call your dog a little bastard when it's a little bitch, Dana? But my doggy, and I'm her, I'm her go-to guy when she wants food or someone to pick up shit off the grass. I'm dear for her, okay? I'm always dear for my puppy. And I call her worse than that sometimes. Let me tell you. But she got me back, and she poop on my floor. Yeah, take that, Dana. That's another thing, you know. Um, the dog. I've never raised my hand to my dog. My dog, now I do that with people sometimes. I'll go over to my dog when I got friends here and I'll raise my hand up. I'm going to smack my dog. And my dog's like, <laughs> hey, buddy, hey, what do you do? What do you do, buddy? It doesn't conceive it, it doesn't understand it. But my dog knows key words, like an amazing amount of key words. Words that I won't even say even on the air because <laughs> it'll drive her into a frenzy. She was half a mile away. She goes, come running at me. Because a dog is intelligent, a dog has emotions, a dog has feeling, a dog has memory. A dog knows all my friends' vehicles, their motorcycles, their scooters. My dog knows my neighbor's doors, which one she likes and which one she don't. But, you know, it's just a dumb animal, right? My dog has never been run over by my wheelchair because my dog is a dumb animal. It understands specifically the noise of the wheelchair when it, when it engages and it knows to be on the move. It'll put its head under the wheel and all I gotta do is go click and that'll be gone. It'll be snoring and it'll be on its feet and out of the way. I've done it for friends many a times. Because my dog is stupid, right? Because an animal is stupid, right? Well, you can talk to Dr. Raymond Gilmetty from Loveless. He murdered... Beagle dogs for years and years and years because he thinks they're stupid. I don't agree with that. I believe dogs are extremely, extremely intelligent, given half a chance. Uh, studies have shown they understand at least 700 words by the time they're eight years old in sentences. They're able to pick up on it. My dog knows when my phone, uh, you can hear the voices on the phone. She understands the text messaging. <laughs> Who's coming, Dana? Who's coming? Who's coming, Dana? Who's coming? As soon as you get text me, who is it? Who is it? Who is it, Dana? Come on. <laughs> That's a fact that you can't uh, deny. It's a precious thing on this planet. There's 8 million, 8.8 .8 million species. We've only, we don't even know a quarter of them. But we estimate there's 8.8 .8 million species on the planet at least. Well, whatever is in the Pacific is doomed. It's finished. What they got done to the land, uh, to the Pacific, is 50 square miles a day going into the Pacific. That's a minimum at 2 kilometers an hour, at 1,000 pounds a minute, at 1,440 minutes a day, at 
three melted reactors and a detonated melted fuel pole at reactor number four that is probably missing. Well, why else would he fake all the videos of the interior? Oh, I thought you were gone. Hey, smarten up, smarten up. Hey, let's go. Hang on, folks. Hey, 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 hey. Let's go. Right here. Get in here. Come see Dana. Come on. Come on in. Come on. Come on. Oh. Hey, hey. Zoe. You get your butt. You you better settle down. I'm only going to tell you 500 more times. You better smarten up. She's good. So I just ramble on for how many minutes? Oik. I better get my ass in gear. 30 minutes. Still rocking. Still rolling. No one's yelling at me. Dana, fix your fucking microphone. Hi, Stacy. Grandma Goldie, Cats Alive, Nuts for Arts, Albert, Lunar, Region, Foggy Range. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Here we go again. Let me go. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What have I got for the last half? Anybody know? Anybody guess? How about... Nuclear engineer, far more radioactivity inside the spent fuel ponds than the radio uh, reactors. And could very well produce damage greater than Chernobyl, March the 15th, 2011. And, well, Chernobyl, number three at Fukushima is 18 million times than, worse than Chernobyl. 18 million. Chernobyl is one-third the size. It was a 30% meltdown. Fukushima has MOX fuel in number three for sure, and most likely one, two, and three, one, two, and four also had what well, we know had at least 500 kilograms, probably a lot more than that of plutonium. But that's a lot to make a pound of plutonium is an amazing amount of work. It's a a lot of money. You got to kill a lot of people. You got to give a lot of leukemias to kids to produce that. You got to murder a lot of creatures in your community to produce that. And so they murdered a lot of people. Um, March the 16th, the Belgium Institute had put out a forecast map of radioactive clouds. Shows a threat to the U.S. West Coast. March the 16th, five days. Beat the other guys by two days. The new study we're talking about tonight. Beat that one by two days. But the new study was an interesting one. Because we need that, right? Fukushima cloud, now at the Atlantic, France, ABS, CBN News, Philippines, March the 20th. Fukushima nuclear plume covered most of North America and is now over the North Atlantic, March the 19th, including the Caribbean, Canada's East Coast. And I tell you about Canada, we're number one. We wanted it. We got it. Say thank you to the cancer gods. March 19th, cesium-137 plume forecast for North America and Europe. Uh, this was France's IRSN model it. Yeah, see? This is real. I know, a shock, right? April 13th, 2011, Japan Nuclear Commission revealed Fukushima may have emitted more radioactive material than official Chernobyl total. I'm not going to go down that road right away because I already covered it in the last half an hour. Japan official says delay in raising Fukushima to a level 7 was because we could have triggered a panic. They could have had a panic because they paid us. See, it wouldn't be a panic if they'd done their job. It wouldn't be a panic. You can't call it a panic. How can you call that a panic? You got a catastrophic event, and you don't tell them because you're worried about a panic. That that there might be a, a hundred people might get killed in the panic, rather than millions dying a decade later from vicious cancers. What's the better, right? So in the short term, ah, right, you don't see the cancer, so we'll just pretend it's not happening. But a decade down the road, your children, your wife. Your friends, your brothers, your aunts, your sisters, your uncles, your nephews, your nieces, your cousins, your pet dogs, your cats, your hamsters could die and did. April 13th, not just cancer, but low doses of radiation causes heart diseases and strokes, 
diabetes, autoimmune deficiencies, dementia, Alzheimer's, all kinds of creepy shit, like 1,700 diseases from, from ingesting radioactive particles. And you did. You better pay attention. June 14, 2011, scientists tracking Fukushima release question why radiation spread so quickly to the southern hemisphere. Uh, I don't know. Probably got nothing to do with the jet stream. Right. If you, if, if you take the jet stream out of the equation, everything's pretty cool. That's what Thunderfoot done, right? The just scum of the earth, man. A nuclear scientist. He was one of the first ones out there apologizing. Oh, well, that's what, he, that's what he gets paid to do. He's paid to do it, right? He's a disgusting maggot. I'm going to destroy him when I get my wire cast and a whole bunch of these other uh, apologists. June 18, 2011. Uh, 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 UK government, June 22nd. Government plan based on radiation release from Fukushima being almost double Chernobyl total. Right, the lies back in June 2011 were out there in full swing. Double Chernobyl, double Chernobyl, double it. They had three 100% meltdowns at Fukushima. Chernobyl, one third the size. Chernobyl, 30% meltdown. Chernobyl, you put a million people in there, 600,000 soldiers. You you sacrificed 600 um, helicopter pilots who died of radiation poisoning. To drop stuff in there so people can get in there. You brought in tens of thousands of miners to dig under. You sacrificed. And you're still paying for that. And you always will. There's 3,400 square kilometers around uh, Chernobyl evacuated. Permanently. But, I mean, there's at least 9,000 square miles around Chernobyl that is highly radioactive. But 3,400 is really bad. Fukushima, the entire country, is now... Worse than Chernobyl. The entire country. Everything. And so is North America. Is higher than Chernobyl. So is Canada. So is Vietnam. So is China. And the Pacific is filling up. At about 1.8 million cubic miles. Of radiation. I'm sorry. Um, square miles of radiation. So the rain is going to pick that up. And liberate that. Put it into the environment drag it across oceans, deposit it far, far into your interior. And so on the west side of the Rocky, it heads to the east coast. And on the east, on the west side of the Rockies, it heads to the Pacific when it falls and goes through your estuaries, your rivers. The fallout was like insanity. And once, let me go back to that number again. And I'll jump back into the headlines. 2.2 billion times just a normal fuel, uh, a reactor, not counting the fuel pools, but just not counting all the other stuff that was there. But just to re one reactor of Fukushima could release and did release 2.2 billion. These things are out of control. They're releasing constantly. It's non-stop. The site is covered in broken fuel rods and the pellets are everywhere. The pellets are emitting the neutrons, the x-rays, they're splitting the atoms on top of that. These are concoctions and mixtures that are un unimaginable because they come from chain reacted nuclear missiles these are old nuclear missiles that they milled and re and put through the chain reaction again like the media has to come out and put their back have to stop lying it can't so that's never going to happen and so we're going to do it i mean you got no idea what's coming in the next couple of weeks but i can guarantee you all this huffing and puffing i've been doing for eight months i'm finally going to get some satisfaction get some shit and hacks Something shit happening. You know, I want a big, I want huge boats. I need that. I need Woods Hole. I need 800 scientists. I need, I need 800 scientists. I need drones. You, you, like the, the logistics of what I want to do, what I intend to do. I got no friggin' idea how I'm going to pull this one off. But I know I'm going to do it. I'm not going to stop till it's done. I'm going to have to organize it. Somebody has to do that. Make it happen. And we ain't got no time to play games anymore. And so I am going to put my back. And, I'll, and I have been for eight months. I haven't stopped. I've got myself educated and helped educate an amazing amount of people in order to have a proper debate. And they're still 
fabricating it to tell it on CBC and BBC and ABC and NBC and blah, 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 blah. Loy, 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 loy. Let me keep going. Surprise. Researchers say radioactivity levels detected by air monitoring stations were higher than the computer models had predicted. The Japanese government had made 5,000 aerosol models from the reactors of the dispersal, right? And never told Japan. But they paid for it. They paid for those pensions. They paid for those people. They put their fate in those people. They hired those people. And they didn't do their job. 300,000 plus becquels a square meter of radioactivity iodine deposited in areas near Tokyo. Oh, Jesus. You know, I got, I got news for you. Iodine doesn't travel by itself. Okay? So let me do that number for you. Just so you can under keep, you know, I got to keep doing this so people who don't know any better and watches this can understand how the big boys play. And we got 300,000, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros and a 3. And we're going to multiply that and we're going to pick up the night. Instead of saying 100 times strontium or 98, because I covered that last night, 99 times strontium last night, 90, more. Wherever you see cesium, there's 300 times. Wherever you see iodine, there's much more cesium. So I'm going to use iodine and flip it to times, oh, what's the new number tonight? 93 times of strontium, more strontium than there was iodine or cesium. So just to be a dick. 2.8 million becquels in a square meter in Tokyo. 2.8 million. Well, that would add up. That works for all the numbers we got, right? And I covered I covered Fukushima, right from Fukushima, right to the west coast of Japan, in every prefecture, right through the entire country, of the radioactive fallout in those communities that we have, uh, you know, because I have 12,000 headlines. I've, I'm slowly getting through this stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. French map of CC-137 disposition from Fukushima shows the U.S. more contaminated than Western Japan. It went up in the air and straight across the Pacific, but it never stopped hemorrhaging at it there till, no till November before it slowed down. So March or April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, almost eight months. Right. So Japan got hammered too. Don't think it didn't. And, but I don't think America didn't get hammered. Don't think Canada didn't get hammered. Don't think everything on the Pacific Ocean coastline didn't get hammered. There's no sardines. There's no squid. There's no anchovies. The birds are dying. The seals are dying. Oh, the walrus are dying. Eagles are dying. The deer are all dying. They don't know what the frig it is. But it's not Chernobyl. Never seen a die-off like it in their lives. But it's not Chernobyl or Fukushima. Never, never, don't know what the frick is happening to the 20 species of starfish from Alaska to the East Coast to New Mexico. But it's not Fukushima. You know, 50 square miles coming out into the ocean every day. Those isotopes are not bananas. Those isotopes, not potato chips. Those isotopes got nothing to do with an x-ray. It's a total different type. Uh, shut up, Dana. October 25th, 2011. Top scientists refute Japanese government copious quantities of radioactivity leaked from the spent fuel pool number four. It's probably all gone at number four. I don't think there's anything left at number four. I think number four is friggin' gone. You know, I covered so much. I can't, I can't sit here and say, you know, I, I, oh, good luck on getting some fuel rods or assemblies out of uh, number four, boys. Hold your breath. They're at it. I don't think it's there. That's just a hoax. They showed us pictures of a perfectly pristine building at CBS. I called them out. Set Dorn. They showed it on BBC. They showed it on RT. Nobody asked a question. Gee, you don't suppose there's something going on here. Right? No, nobody said a friggin' word. They put it out there with pictures, with video. And said, oh, yeah, no, that's it, boy. But they don't show you the exterior of the building and say... It's pretty amazing that that pool survived inside of that wasteland, that detonation that was felt 25 miles away by an AP reporter. Uh, October 25th, obviously worrying. New estimates says Fukushima released 
Far more radiation than Japan claims. And the government didn't count what went over the Pacific or came out of it every day for 1170 days. It's not like it's a plume came out of there. It's a plume a minute. Every minute for 1170 days. They want you to think it's a plume. Went in the ocean and they're tracking it. And they want you to think it's a plume. Went into the environment of a cloud and they're tracking it. And it didn't stop. It didn't stop. What part about that is it you can't wrap your mind around and tell people? How else are you ever going to hold this industry accountable? How else are we ever going to have a future? How else will the 8.8 million species ever have a genetic future if we don't speak out because they don't speak English like we do? It's up to you. It's up to me. It's up to us to come out and, if necessary, bash these fuckers. Bash them good. Bash them everywhere. Bash them on social networking. Bash them on the radio shows. Bash them. Get there and fucking bash them. Say, hey, you lying scumbag, yellow belly, bootlicking, cheerleading, lapdog for the death machine, you mass murdering liar. Show me in E equals M equals uh, e, e equals MC square where it says put a banana into a nuclear reactor. Where does it say that a banana is like a fuel rod? I want to see it with my own two fucking eyes. NRC chairman discusses core on the floor is possible that severely damaged, melted nuclear fuel is migrated outside the reactor building. Gee, you don't suppose? <laughs> October twenty seventh. Whatever, I don't even care anymore. November 6, 2011, Japan Solar City. Yeah, yeah, you need a solar city. You need a solo friggin' head on your shoulder. Japan, like of Japan, 99% of the people lost their fate in the government. Even the people who work for the government has lost their fate, but they're not going to do anything because they need a pension and they can't get a job. If they quit their job, they'll have to, have to go do decommissioning work, so they're not going to do that. They're friggin' dead man walking. Japan is de dead man walking. Japan is a gross, disgusting, demented society anyway. It's been taken over, and I've seen all Japanese people are fucking evil, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying Japan is a demented society. They sell little girls' panties in vending machines at the fucking mall. How much more fucking twisted than that can you possibly get? Newsflash, massive nuclear demonstration in Japan. Citizens are standing up for their lives more than ever before. No, you just didn't report on it, you low-life scum, yellow belly. November 30th, study. No temperature reading for the cement floors. The outcome is based on TEPCO's projection of DK heat and uses computer models from Westinghouse. Westinghouse is going to go down... Just like the Nazi regime, they'll be remembered as just the most evilest thing. If there is a future, I don't think there's much of a future. I can't imagine how we can have a future. Remember what happened to the Philippines. Remember what happened to Tonga. Do you think for one second that that's not connected to Fukushima? You give you a head a shake. Both of those typhoons converged on Japan, swept through Japan, picked up incredible amounts of radiation. Remember, a gram is equal to a million watts. It was That was a radioactive cloud. It was picking up all that moisture and radioactive material from the coastline where it's been running out and running along that coastline. That's what happened. 195 mile an hour winds destroyed 90 or 42 provinces. From one end right to the other end, it was 195 mile an hour sustained with gusts at 225 miles per hour. Miles per hour. 195. We've never seen that in a storm on this planet. Yeah, you can find that in a couple of places. We're in mountains where there's freak winds once in a while, but not in a storm. You're talking 30 million trees, coconut trees, gone. 30 million. It's like insane. 42 provinces leveled. 14 million people displaced permanently. Don't have nothing left. And the lies and the manipulations are endless about it. You go to Google, it's oh, 155 mile an hour, pretty strong. No, it wasn't. I done a video, it's down below. And I got all the newscasts in there, 195 mile an hour, sustained wind, Hundred never seen nothing like it. People on the ground said it was a tornado. 
300 mile wide tornado. A tornado is usually like half a mile. That would be huge. A quarter mile would be still huge. It would only last for two or three miles. That would be massive distance. This thing took apart 42 provinces. It took it apart like it didn't exist. It stripped the pavement off the road. The storm surge was like a raging river. The air was projectiles. That was radiation from Fukushima. As the ocean fills up with radiation, I can guarantee it. Just like Tonga, just like the Philippines, you're going to get more of these. Tonga was 185 mile an hour winds. That, that should only exist on Mars. That's not supposed to be on Earth. It's global warming, Dana. Shut your fucking mouth. Shut your pie hole. Nuclear safety, Dana. Shut your trap. You won't say it to my face. I'll haul the hair out of your head. I'll peel back your eyebrows. Okay, let me keep going. I'll come over and check too. Double check. What the frig is going up with all the traffic tonight? Oh, Zoe, I'm locking you in tomorrow next time. This is getting ridiculous. Oh, it's Friday. All oh, right. Hi, everybody. In the near future, a baby will be born with a pair of balls growing his or her armpits and weirder shit than that. <laughs> mm, I got me balls right here. I see you kick them. Mm. <laughs> uh, mm. Okay. Fukushima Revelations. Roosevelt. James Beck. Ice Wall, Ice Wall. Well, the ice wall is hopeless. Great big slurpy, dirt slurpy under the ground. No, it's just a way to scam money from everybody, from the system, from the taxpayers. If they wanted to really do the job, they would have tried a long time ago. They wouldn't have killed all the homeless in Japan, right? All the, the, the immigrants, all the, the people can't read or write, right? The displaced, the, the marginalized, the victimized of the society are our heroes. That's who we owe our existence to right now. Is the homeless. The cowards are running them in there and they're running away at the same time. It's sickening. And our media, our academic world is repulsive. It's utterly repulsive. They're still like sure, you know, they're, they're they're still saying Chernobyl is worse. And nobody nobody they don't even edit themselves. They don't even edit the words that a banana you get more radiation from a banana than you would from Fukushima or from Whip. Think about Whip. They had a fire, and for nine days, a truck fire. No one would go back down in the mine. Then on Valentine's Day, Whip said they had a radiation release. That was nine days after the truck fire. Nobody had been back down in that mine. I covered that with the clips of them saying it. Nobody had been back down in that mine for nine days because truck fires are so dangerous, right? Your government doesn't care about you. Your government hates your guts. Your government is sick. To there's nobody to hold them accountable. There's, there's nobody to hold them accountable. Everybody's lost in fluff. Everybody's lost in their own little tiny paradigm. And everything is useless unless you deal with Fukushima. All your other issues, all your other problems are fucking stupid unless you deal with Fukushima, unless you put that into the light. Everything else is hopeless. The police state is being brought in to try to control the backlash coming that if there's a wake up of this, they can't do it fucking idiots you know it's really this is really this is why we're here all the time I'm not here for something to do I'm not here because I'm a fear monger anybody call me that I disrespect you you got to have someone like me out there telling the truth I can't help it that it's it's scary that's not my fault okay but I can't tell you the truth by sugarcoating it or pretending that is not what it is I can't get that message out there. The urgency is real. The urgency is imminent. The urgency is driving everybody here tonight. The reason you're here is because you understand the urgency of this. 
or you happen up on the video and you were watching it and you were trying to do a cartoon and you were saying if he's and whatever. But Whip had a, a truck fire, okay? And so they're disguising it as a radiation release when the real issue is a truck fire and we should ban all trucks in North America. That is the reality of it. You're right. By telling you it's a radiation release, they're lying to you. There's always a radiation release at these places. It never stops. It's the truck, right? Everybody I whip was like, I got me a union. I don't got to go down there. I don't got to do jack shit. I'm a union guy. And because he knows truck fires are like terrifying, right? I mean, you think about it. You're going down the road. What would you do if you seen a truck on the road with you? I know what I do. I get off the road and I duck and cover. Because we're not worried. It's not radiation we're really worried about here. It's actually trucks. And trucks are the most scariest things God has created. God created trucks. I know that for a fact. That's a fact, okay? God created trucks. And then the humans created the nuclear industry because that's in the Bible. And he said, create the nuclear industry uh, to hide the dangers of trucks. And you're doing God's work. That's blasphemy, Dana! What? I actually believe in the Bible. The Bible calls for the end of the world. So you support the end of the world. The, the Bible says that the whole world will turn against Israel and that God will come down and only the people, not the Jews now, but only the people in Israel, in Jerusalem rather, will go to heaven. So that's why they're ethnically cleansing uh, Jerusalem. That's why it's so important to build all those settlements around it and to displace the, the, the people. I know they want to call them Muslims or Arabs or whatever the case may be, but I call them people, okay? You know, they got two eyes. They got the same hopes and dreams as me and you. And the Bible is used to control you, to manipulate you, to teach you that you are insignificant when you are the most important. You are God all on your own. You have the ability to change things and make things for the better all on your own. In the very definition of the word, you are a God. But in the very definition of the word, the water is God. Without water and sunlight, nothing exists. So water, water is God, which is, seems more realistic. Or sunlight is God, because you can actually have life without the sunlight. Uh, as long as you've got a bit of heat for the water. Water is God. By the very definition, water is God. Water is in contact with all of us. We all are in contact with each other through the moisture in our ear. Our upper troposphere is a radioactive ocean now, but it was an ocean. It was a river. Uh, ocean amount of water in our upper atmosphere and our troposphere, lower and upper tropospheres. And without water, we don't exist. Without water, the 8.8 .8 million species on this planet do not exist. If that's not God, I don't know what the frig is. If water is not the most important thing, period, Besides oxygen, I suppose, and the sunshine, which is pretty cool. But water is the most important element in our entire universe. If we want to go anywhere in our solar system, it has to be water. We're going to try to stop the human race from ever getting into the solar system because we don't deserve it. We destroyed God, which is water, by turning it into, uh, by using man made radioactive material and constantly poisoning it. That's all we've ever done. We poison all the water on this planet with radioactive materials on purpose. Nothing else makes any sense. And we attack with everything else. you got 90,000 ships on the ocean. That's the equivalent of bunker burning ships. 15 bunker burning ships, those big cargo ships with 5,000 containers on it, they burn, their pollution is equal to every car on this planet. And so 90,000 ships, 15 of them is, 90,000 of them would be equal to 42 trillion people on this planet every day. They're destroying the water. Because those particles also go up into the troposphere. Those particles pollute the ocean, acidify the ocean, destroy the life in the ocean. But now Fukushima and radiation. And I'm sure there's a raging debate there about God and water. <laughs> but water, without water, and, and once again, structured water... Right? There was this experiment with all these institutions and this documentary, it's called BOA. And they went all around the world and talked to all these prestigious universities with their studies on water. And like a president 
was wash his hands with water, but not soap. Water would sterilize it, but that was structured water. They took a hospital patient who was terminally ill. They took a blood sample. All the blood was plated together. This is a terminally ill patient. They gave her water from a mountain on camera too. They and then they put it right on her. They took a blood sample and put it under a microscope and showed you. Then she drank a glass of water. Twenty minutes later, they took another blood sample. And she drank another glass of water. And while we were waiting for another 20 minutes, they looked at that sample and the blood was on plating. It was on plating in 20 minutes. On video. But this is studies all over the planet. But that's, that's why you're dying because your blood is all plated up. All the cells are plated up. That's what cancer is. And DCA down below, you need to check that out if you think, you know, this unplates your blood. It's just a natural, normal mineral in that sense, but you extract it to get quantities of it. And it unplates your blood, which is cancer plates your blood up, and that's why cancer kills you. But if you unplate it, cancer can't grow or you destroy the cancer and a whole bunch of other issues that your body, you know, life-threatening issues is from your blood plating up. And so that simple little trick uh, could save uh, would save your life if you'd done that. Just drinking water from the mountains, even though it's got radioactive material into it. You know, I don't know how that works in the context of structured water. Does that, you know, unstructure the water? Or does structured water still stay structured? If the water that runs through your house is not structured, it's going through all these pipes and machines, and you change the, the molecules... And now scientists understand how to switch the molecules, but they don't know why they do that. Why, why the structure water switches molecules? Water is the only thing in our periodic table that exists in all three gas, liquid, and solid forms, right? Water, you know, like a plant can push up to pavement. A plant that you can take and just tear apart with your finger immediately when it does that. You can just pick it right out of the pavement after pushed up through the pavement and just tear it apart. But yet it was able to push up because of the water in it. That's amazing, see? But water is life. The ocean is a soup of life. Well, it was. The ocean, like a glass of water, salt water from the ocean, 75 to 100 million phytoplankton creatures. There's a billions of other creatures in that same glass of water. That is a soup of life. That is a soup of life. And... MIT, radiation contaminated seawater could reach the U.S. west coast in as little as five years. The current at two miles an hour, the corrosion current travels up to nine kilometers an hour, but at two miles an hour, it's going to go right across the Pacific in 130 days. And every day behind it was 50 square miles of radioactive material. A thousand pounds a minute. Think of the radioactive dive like St. Paddy's Day. I'll come over and say hi to everybody. Good night to everybody. Uh, December the 6th, I'll just run through three or four fast ones. December the 6th, just to try to get through the thousands that I got. TEPCO is admitting they're very close to China syndrome in Fukushima, where the melted fuel pen penetrated the earth. Ah, that was uh, December the 6th. It's gone. It was gone. You got <laughs> Let me just read the headlines anyway, just to get a few of these out of the way. Uh, Fukushima commander, I thought Japan was finished. Expansion of the evacuation zone up to 200 kilometers was repeated, repeatedly simulated. So the simulations, the 5,000 simulations that Japan done in the first uh, two months that was paid for by the taxpayer and never showed to them, were all shown that they, they need to evacuate out. In fact, the Japanese government had made plans to evacuate all their government and a couple of hundred thousand of their lackeys and their bootlickers 200 kilometers west. And I'll Come in and say good night to everybody. 200 kilometers west. Anyway, uh, the video was new model shows west coast covered in Fukushima fallout a week after 311. That's a new model. That's important. But it only included the 137 CCM. It didn't include all their daughters. It didn't include 100 times more strontium-90 and all the hits daughters. It didn't include the iodine-131, the iodine-132. There was 10 times more of that. It was 9 times more. It's more ingested easily into your thyroid, 132. The 133, there was 30 times more. It doesn't include the uranium. It doesn't include the plutonium. We'll come in and say good night to everybody. One hour, four minutes. Ha <laughs> ha. Damn it, I thought I was on time. I thought I was on the hour, Mark. 
Okay, good night. Stacy, nuts alive. Foot, I get you back in. See, two, two, two to you tonight. Pat standing foot. Patrick, nuts for art. Grandma Goalie, hugs. Big Now TV. Brita Youngie. Uh, nuts for art. Starlight. Stacy, time at the DCA. You get to DCA, you got to go to your pharmacist. Call up your pharmacist and ask them do they have a compound chemist. All right, call up all your pharmacy in your communities. Or next to your community, the big ones. Even your little community should have a compound pharmacy in one of the pharmacies, and they will actually make the DCA for you. And I do it. I go down here and I get them to make it up, and I buy it. It's a hundred bucks for a little bottle, but it's worth about you know you get three or four months out of it. It's harmless. It's insignificant. It's you know a chocolate bar is ten times worse for you. A coffee is ten times worse for you. The ice cream. It's 10 times worse for you, plus it's GMO. And it's, hey, uh, Ben & Jerry is, is almost all non-GMO. <laughs> the only ice cream out there, not GMO, is soon going to be Ben & Jerry. They switched almost all their ingredients. Now, that's important, right? We can actually think about eating ice cream again because <laughs> of the GMO. So, good night, everybody. I won't keep keep going. Fukushima in Revelation says, Genesis 120, And God said, Let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, across the vault of the sky. You know, God also said, If one thing in the Bible is wrong, then the whole Bible should be disregarded. And that the earth is not 5,000 years old, and that, Scientists didn't, people didn't plant, or God didn't plant the dinosaur bones here to trick everybody to find the believers and the disbelievers. And I hate saying that to people because I have a lot of religious friends in my uh, life here. And but I do the same with them, where I says, you know, I don't care if you're a Buddhist, I don't care if you're Catholic or Protestant, I don't care what kind of religion or ideology you follow. I just care that you're here, and. I don't begrudge people from believing in something that I can't. Okay, I had all my friends raped by pedophile priests when I was growing up, and that has scarred me, let alone them. And some of them are not with us anymore because they committed suicide. And I resent that, and I know why. You know, I understand how we had to sell every church in Newfoundland because of the pedophile priests. There was nothing good in religion in my life or any of theirs lives in any of the people in that province they had to sell the graveyards and that was do we have mass graves from the catholics from the churches the people that are supposed to protect the poor we had the mass raping i can't for a second put my fate in something that allowed that to happen and say that that's normal that that part of the big plan is to destroy my friends lives and their children and their wives and their husbands and their fathers and their daughters lives a perpetual motion machine that keeps, you know, I can't put any kind of, there's 4,000 Bibles written every day in the academics and they're locked away. You know, all the Bible does is give people a free reign. I'm not saying that people don't find solace in it. I get that because they've been brainwashed their entire life and there's signs all over through their communities. They can't escape it. All their friends, all their families that they have accumulated over the years are because of their religious ideology and they can't step back and say, hey, you know, you know, you can't have one without the other. So why have both of them? No offense. I'm just saying, you know, I have a, I have a very valid reason to fucking hate these people, to hate that religion shit with a passion. Till the end of days, I will hate fucking religion. I get it. I understand it. I come from it. I was born into it. But I'm not naive. God is water. That's God. That's the definition of God. It knows everything. It sees everything. It's aware of everything. That's what water is. It's everywhere. We piss it out. We extract it. We, we put it in our body all the time. We put it back into the system. Water is shaped like a computer memory chip. The list is very long. I'm not, I'm, I'm just saying once in a while you can expect me to snap. I'm not, I'm not, let me in on that. I'm not begrudging people for uh, finding solace in religion. 
I don't get it. And my friends can't find any solace in religion. It's hard to find it when they're sitting down because they've been buggered so much. Our entire province has been raped. But we're not the only ones. And it's still ongoing. It's not just Catholics. It's the Protestants and everybody else. Good night, everybody. Good night. We'll catch everybody on Monday. And just to make sure I got everything rocking and rolling. I know me. You know me. I won't shut up unless I shut up. So <laughs> I'll come in and click it and give it up. Hour and nine minutes. I can just get warmed up. I'm just ready to go. But I'm going to save it for when I, I roll out everything in the next week or two. The dot orgs. The new Wirecast full thing, the eight core computer. When I roll all that out, the streams are going to be all over the place, but there will be these regular streams, but I'll be doing a lot more streaming each day, short streams with all the pictures and the videos. As quick as I can find it, make sure I can verify everything. I'll come out and slap it down with six, seven minute Wirecast live streams and then go on the hunt again or reload the Wirecast for the next pounding ground. I know I shouldn't salute, but that's not really a salute. It's like, I'll catch you folks later. I'll give up because I won't shut up.